Welcome back to Flax. In this training video, I'm going to introduce you to the Boar Collections in Flax. The British academic written English corpus is possibly one of the most valuable resources in English for academic purposes. Here, with the Boar Collections in Flax, we've opened up the corpus to provide windows onto the student texts within the corpus. These texts were written by students at three UK universities. And here we have features that look at genre, discipline-specific English, word lists, including the academic word list, as well as off-list words that are specific to a particular topic area, lexical bundles, collocations, and the usual search, link, and store functions within Flags. So, let's get started. So here we are again at the home page of the Flax language website. We're going to take a look at the British Academic Written English collections in Flax based on the Bohr corpus. Now these um, have been divided into subcorpora for the physical sciences, arts and humanities, life sciences and social sciences. Let's take a look inside the life sciences subcorpus of the Bohr and you'll notice on the left hand side how every text within the corpus has been arranged according to genre. So we're looking at case studies here. Um, design specification is another genre. Not so many within this particular life sciences corpus within the Bohr. Exercise genre, there are lots of examples here. Explanation, once again, this is quite a populated area within the subcorpus and another genre, proposal, writing. So let's take a look at one of the texts inside the proposal genre within this corpus. So you'll notice um, that you have a student text. We have a, a word list function. This is highlighting um, words from the general service list. Now we've selected the academic word list and other words. Other words are particular to the topic that this text is about. So mathematics, genes, proteins, mutants, other words that I'm finding here. If you click on one of those highlighted words, it will bring you to that word within this particular subcorpus. So going back up to the top, we've also got this Wikify function. This is a glossary function to help you understand less well-known words within the text. So instead of just going to Wikipedia, which is probably what you would do if you came across a word you didn't understand, we've brought Wikipedia to you. And continuing on in this way. We've also got part of speech phrase organization features, so adjective phrases, noun phrases, preposition phrases, and verb phrases. So Flax will pull out all of those phrases automatically and hyperlink them to the wider corpus. So going back to the word list function, we've got another feature here, which is the keyword slider. And you'll notice that these words appear as you move the slider along. So the words at the left hand end of the slider are the most frequent words within this text, not necessarily within the corpus. And this is a little bit of information about the corpus, how it was made. And going on now to the search feature within the subcorpus here. So you can search for words within the collocations database with flex. So mathematical collocations. Here you can link to the words within the collocations as separate words within the learning collocations collection within Flax, which links you to the super collocations database. So here we've got the word mathematical um, used in a lot of different collocations within the B and C corpus. If we go back to the collocations, we can also click on the web icon, which will hyperlink us to 
live examples of the same collocation from the web. So you can see quite a few useful examples there from the web. Going back, we can also save collocations to our cherry basket, as we've done with many other collections in Flax. And this is a useful way to go through and cherry pick and harvest useful language that can be used in your writing or in your speaking. Looking at the cherry basket. Okay, let's move on to the Browse by Discipline feature. And this will organize um, texts within the subcorpus according to the discipline area that they belong to. So here we have texts from food sciences, texts from psychology. Just open one of these up. And once again, the same features with word lists, Wikify, and part of speech. So moving up to the collocations feature. This will take us to all of the words within the subcorpus and the collocations that surround them. So this is organized alphabetically. Let's go to G and just choose a word. So let's click on the word gelatin to see how it's used. It's just used one time within the subcorpus. Let's choose another word. Gallic. Gallic acid. Once again, only used once within the subcorpus. However, if we look at something like genetic, we'll find a lot more examples of this word used uh, um, with collocates to create collocations across the subcorpus. All right, let's move now to take a look at the word list function within the subcorpus for the life sciences in the BOR. And this is going to pull out all of the words within the subcorpus and it arranges them by frequency as the default. And you'll notice that process, research, method, area, and occur are the most frequent words occurring across the subcorpus. You can also sort alphabetically. We've also got the lexical bundles feature within Flax, and this organizes useful phrases within the texts of the corpus according to how they appear at the beginning or in the middle of a sentence. Let's take a look at in the case of to see how this is being used within texts within this particular subcorpus. And now for lexical bundles occurring within the middle of a sentence, for example, the nature of the, as it occurs across the subcorpus. So let's go back to the main library page and we'll go to one of the other subcorpora, this time the Arts and Humanities subcorpus within the Boer. And this um, is looking at critique genre writing. Now we're going to move to exercise genre writing. Not so many exercises, but when you click on essay, you'll notice that there are loads because this is a very um, popular genre within the arts and humanities for writing. Okay, let's go down to literature survey, a lot less here. Methodology recount, we have some. And if we click on critique again up at the top, once again, a very popular genre type for writing in the arts and humanities at university level. Okay. So let's go inside one of these texts and take a look. So if we go over to the 
lexical bundles for the arts and humanities subcorpus within the bore. Once again, we will find phrases at the beginning and in the middle of sentences. So this can be seen as a useful lexical bundle. Let's click on another, despite the fact that. So pulling lots of examples from across the subcorpus within the bore. Returning to those lexical bundles occurring in the middle of sentences. Let's click on one here. It is possible to. So nice examples to show you how these lexical bundles are being used across the subcorpus. Let's return to the word list function to show all of the different words occurring within this subcorpus. So theory, evidence, create, role, and text are the most frequently occurring words in this subcorpus, which are very different from the ones that we saw in the life sciences subcorpus. So this wraps up the training video for the Bore Connections and Flax. We've looked at lots of different features related to genre, specific English for academic purposes, word lists including lexical bundles taken from the corpora, collocations, and the usual searching, linking, storing features that are available in Flax. In the next and final video in this Flax language learning collections series, I'm going to show you how to make your own open language collections in Flax using a lot of the same features that are available here with the Bohr collections.